Hi, I wanted to show you the world's best home gym uh, for me. Uh, I'll start out here, this is a double car garage. It's got uh, two doors, which is perfect for my uses. I've moved the car out so I can show you all this. Um, this is my home gym, and it takes up uh, half of the two car garage. And uh, I'll just show you through this. Um, of particular note is you'll see that I have leveled the floor. I really did not want to be throwing around weights um, with a rolling barbell. I like the idea of a flat floor. So I built a subfloor to level it all out. And I'll show you some more at the end of the video about exactly how to do that yourself. Um, let's see, first off, we'll start here in this corner. This is a new deadlift jack that I'm working on. It's two mini jacks. Um, it breaks down into four pieces and it only weighs six kilos. It's a beautiful little thing, and um, I'll probably give you a link to that later. Um, over here in the corner, we have a body solid GHD, a GHR should I say, glute ham raise. Um, I have put some rubber matting at the bottom so I can, because I do them all weighted, and I've got a uh, 20 kilo plate sitting there that I use for my uh, hypers, my back hypers. Um, I've got some deadlift blocks back there that I just use because I've got fairly long legs and it's just easier to get up onto this thing with those deadlift blocks there. So that's where, and I also need a place to store them. So that's where they are. Right down the back there is just a mat. And now I wanted to point out that um, you can do this fairly cheaply. This I made myself. Some of it was scrap steel, some I bought. Uh, this I bought second hand. Um, everything that isn't a calibrated plate is second hand. Um, you can get a pick of it real cheap. And uh, so the um, glute ham raise I picked up second hand as well uh, for a fraction of the price. Um, this mat that I use for rolling around on the floor and, and so forth, it's a padded mat. I got that for nothing for free. Uh, I think there was a bit of a relationship breakdown and they just wanted to get rid of it. and So I went and picked it up. Uh, here again is another second-hand piece of equipment. This is what I do my rows on, uh, my tricep push-downs, my ab work, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've bought a couple extra handles for it. Uh, and back here you can see um, I've actually adapted it to take two-inch plates or two-inch hole plates, Olympic plates, because uh, that normally these come with those little skinny, horrible, useless one-inch uh, pipes on them, so I've adapted that and that works fine now. Just welded it up. On the back wall, these are all second-hand plates, uh, except on the back there, there's some Technique plates from Vulcan, two and a half kilo Technique plates. Uh, these are all purchased very cheap. An extra handle for this machine here. And um, the barbell rack I bought on an auction site a cap a dumbbell rack and I just ripped it apart and um, screwed it into the wall. That works perfectly. Um, I don't have a huge collection of barbells like some people do. Um, at the bottom there is a Vulcan curl bar which is a beautiful piece of equipment. It uh, takes proper limpet, limpet plates at the, the uh, sleeves spin and the collar spin and um, Beautiful grip, really perfect angle as well, so to save your wrists. I've got my uh, broomstick, a piece of dowel uh, that I bought at the local hardware store. Above that is uh, a woman's weightlifting bar, just so I can practice uh, weightlifting moves with the smaller diameter bar. And above that is a cheap, trashy, I bought secondhand, slightly rusty, uh, junk bar for doing things like T-bar rows and stuff like that. Uh, down the back here, I've got uh, one of my two mini jacks. Uh, this is the old style. Um, I made this myself and uh, that doesn't work nearly as well as the new ones that I'm making. Um, these are way very heavy, bulky, um, and the heavier the barbell, the, the harder it gets up to a point where you just can't use them anymore. Behind that is some uh, deadlift uh, pull blocks uh, that I made. 
just added some uh, uh, timber and leftover rubber matting. Um, uh, I'll just show you one here. You can see there that they're not solid timber all the way through. It's just four pieces cut. You really don't need to make these out of solid timber. Some of them I, use, I see on the internet, people are making them out of four by four uh, pine or uh, similar, but they just become very heavy and it's unnecessary. You really don't need that. Um, on top there, uh, I have some rubber matting to take the pounding um, and then two pieces of timber to stop the barbell from rolling off. Um, and a little bit of strapping screwed on the end of it for a handle. Very simple to make, very easy. Uh, similarly on the other end, we'll get down there in a sec. Here is my pride and joy. This is a Nova combination squat bench press rack. I just finished doing bench press and um, it's still set up for that. Uh, this bench lifts up and you can move it and use it for squ squats overhead press or anything else that you need. I don't need a power rack. Power racks are very bulky, they're expensive, they're, um, they take up so much room. This I can, it's not nailed down or screwed down, I can uh, push it up against the wall, I can move around, I can take it off the platform. Uh, this is what I use in competition. Uh, you don't use a power rack in competition. So I'm training like I compete. Uh, it's got everything that the Aleco official competition benches have or you know other expensive benches like um, Elite FTS uh, and so forth. It's two IPF specifications, it's strong and it's beautiful. The only thing I didn't like about it, it came with these horrible purple highlights. So I just um, left some areas just black as it came and the rest of it I painted red, which is the colour of my gym, red and black. Uh, sitting on there is the barbell. It's an Aleco powerlifting competition barbell. Uh, as you can probably pick up from this, I do powerlifting. I'm not an Olympic lifter. I don't do CrossFit. This is all about powerlifting. And that's why this gym is set up the way it is. It's for me, for what I need. And it's perfect for what I need. Um, nothing that I don't need, everything I do need. Speaking of which, next to that, I've made the safety racks. This uh, squat bench combo rack does come with safety um, pieces, but I took them off and I much prefer these. Um, I can adjust the height. This is at the minimum height. I can raise it up for uh, squats or overhead press or anything else that I want. Um, these have saved my life a few times. <laughs> They work really well. I also use them as um, a bench to do curls and uh, shrugs and all that sort of stuff. I can just move them around the place, put them together so that they make a nice little platform to lay the barbell and uh, I can do heavy shrugs without having to bend over all the time and risk my lower back. Um, as I said, this is all made to IPS specifications. I've changed the colour and I've put in these safety stands uh, but otherwise it works perfectly. As I said, I don't have it uh, screwed into the floor, but I do have a piece of timber here that uh, is used to stop the rack from moving forward. And I've got a single piece there, as you can see, against the gray uh, lip of the garage. That's when I want to do overhead press. I take that uh, long piece out and I just push the rack up against that single piece there. Uh, because over the top of my head is a um, garage door opener and I tend to hit that if I'm not careful, so I just move the rack forward um, <clears throat> with a uh, power rack. Um, I can't overhead press inside a power rack, I'm too tall. So again, that would just, it, a power rack just isn't something that I need. Now you might say, well, what about pull-ups and stuff like that? Well, funny you should say that. Up here, I've got a storage rack. This is where I put uh, equipment that I don't need or store stuff. And here I've got a pull-up bar made out of a piece of re reinforcing steel. Um, and I made all of that myself, like most of the equipment in this gym. 
Now on either side of the platform I have some Aleco style plate rack storage. Uh, again I made all these by myself. Um, I modified it a little. One of the things that I did, as you can see here, the plate dividers are welded underneath the, the top uh, section. Uh, that means that there's room there to put that white strip of plastic and so that my plates don't get all crunched up when I throw them onto the, onto the plate stand. Um, uh, I've got everything down to the 0.25 plates for powerlifting uh, and everything up to 25 kilo plates. I think in all I have around about uh, 370 or 380 kilos of calibrated powerlifting plates. Now this is the sort of thing that you would use in a competition, uh, so I'm not having to worry about having crappy plates with the wrong diameter hole, um, deadlifting with one side being five or ten kilos heavier than the other. Uh, this, uh, these plates are what you use in competition. Um, it's worth spending money on decent equipment when it comes to your bars and plates. Everything else you can skimp on. I have storage racks underneath them to hold stuff like. Um, plastic collars, you can see balls there, a wire brush to clean the bar, um, a mouthpiece. I've also got this, um, I've forgotten the name, but now this is to massage your back. If you um, don't have a very friendly massage therapist in the house, you can use this to get into some awkward spots. Theracane, Theracane is what it is. Um, as you can see, this is the Aleco calibrated competition powerlifting bar. Um, there we go, because it's got a little red sticker there. And those are the end caps. Uh, the new NG bars have got a different end, end cap now. Okay, moving on. Uh, there's my other mini jack that I don't use anymore because I have the new ones. I've got a couple of kettlebells here. Um, they're stored on the platform and another one here that I've been using for some uh, barbell, uh, kettlebell swings. That's a 28 kilo kettlebell. Um, on the other side of the platform I've got another plate, plate rack storage. And uh, that's, you know, it's got some nose torque and some um, wrist wraps and a screwdriver to adjust my lever belt. And I think even there's some aspirin there. I also have some uh, wrist wraps and lifting straps, which I use for front squats. <clears throat> uh, so back over here, we've got my foam roller. Um, this is a chalk bin that I made myself. It's got a little lever at the side to hold my belt and a, there's a slingshot there, a black slingshot. Um, chalk bin. I, <coughs> This is a plastic bin that I bought from Walmart and there's a plywood box that, it's, um, that I made for it to fit in and then that's screwed onto a, um, a piece of uh, equipment, um, it was like a rowing machine or something that I got for free and um, I picked up and then I just welded that onto a plate. On the side there I've got a, a band, a red band and I just hang that off the side there, so everything that I need is right here. Over here I've got an incline bench that I refurbished, painted it, took all the rust off it, um, put new vinyl on the seat, and I use that, uh, mostly I use it for stretches, but um, you can, I also use it for uh, dumbbell chest work and back work and all that sort of stuff. It's quite nifty, so it's adjustable, and that, as I said, I got for free must have it fanned for the summer and speaking of which above there we have a garage heater and uh, it gets very cold here probably down to about 40 degrees minus 40 during the winter so that keeps it toasty warm in the corner here um, i got a whole bunch of these dumbbells it came in a dumbbell rack which i um, chopped about a third of it off it was far too long for the number of dumbbells i got these are all in pounds, which is a pain in the neck, and I'm in the process of changing that. And then in underneath there, I've got a calibrated scale. So 
Uh, it's calibrated down to, I think, 50 grams. Um, and uh, you can set in your local gravity level as well to make sure it's accurate. Uh, nice little piece of equipment. And then over here, I've got just a, some storage racks. I've got a, um, a calf training board or for stretching your calves. In there also, I've got um, bits and pieces that I use, extension cords, um, a tripod for doing my videos because when you train alone, you really need to video everything. And something, oh, there's one of my, um, here's one of my jacks. They work beautifully, just isn't finished yet. Um, and also in here, I've got some dumbbell handles that I made. These were made specifically to take a 20 or 25 kilo plate. That's why the, it does so long. Um, that way I can do shrugs with full size plates without them whacking against my legs. So I've got a couple of those in there. Um, I keep spare chalk, different sets of lifting shoes, knee sleeves, uh, some cleaning stuff. Uh, rubber bands, all that sort of stuff down there. Um, vacuum cleaner, and then you get over and into the garage side of things. Um, some medals and stuff in the World Championships. A bit of inspiration from the Spartans. And um, here I've just got a little workshop that's on the car side of the garage. Uh, everything I read, you know, saws, uh, steel cutters, welders, all that sort of stuff. Storage area. Um, six dollar stereo <laughs> which I picked up and I've got it permanently locked into an old iPhone that's my music system and um, little bits and pieces tools and stuff that's all stored there um, very important the clock to keep track of how long my rest breaks are uh, a thermometer for um, winter time to make sure that my garage is the right temperature fire extinguisher in case I get too hot and cleaning supplies um, and other garage stuff. So that's it. Um, in the middle of this gym, I've made a three meter by three meter platform. Now a competition platform is three meters by two meters. But by making it the extra meter longer, I can, you know, leave the rack there and do deadlifts there. Um, I just move the bench press bench part. Um, it, it pops out and I just move it to one side. I so I can do my deadlifts there squats, bench press, just virtually everything that I do happens there or in the corner there. Um, so that's it, it's all, it's all screwed together, there's no glue, so if I need to move it or I need to get underneath it for some reason, um, I can just pull it apart. Don't make a platform with glue and screws, totally unnecessary, it ain't going nowhere, especially when you've got equipment on it. And if you do glue it together, then you're stuffed if you want to move it or throw it out, you've got to cut it up and it's a real pain on the neck. Don't do that. Uh, I have um, uh, horse stall mats. They didn't have the normal six foot by four foot mats, so I got the larger ones, uh, seven foot, I think, seven by five or something. But anyway, I got them for a cheaper price. Um, uh, they, they cover everything, I think they are, three quarter inch or whatever they are. They're the thicker one, not the half inch. I think they're three quarter inch, not half inch. Uh, so the only thing that I haven't done yet is I haven't put carpet on the platform, but it's no big deal. If your carpet is, if your platform is wood and polished, you're gonna have trouble. You're gonna get slipping and you're gonna get scratches and scarring where if you just leave it rough, uh, you've got plenty of traction, you're not gonna slip. And if you do scratch it, it doesn't matter. Um, but eventually I'll put some grey carpet down so that it looks just like the official powerlifting platforms. Uh, so that's about it. Like I said, this is made for me. This is the perfect gym for me. Uh, if your sport is different or if your needs are different, then uh, you obviously need to change what you do. So most people prefer a power rack. I don't. I didn't bother getting one. I don't need it. Uh, this just suits me fine. If it uh, gets too hot, I can open that other door, but uh, I don't bother. So that's about it. Um, I might tack on at the end 
uh, how I, did, I leveled the floor. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Before we get on to the floor leveling, I just wanted to show you what the garage looked like when I first got it. All of the drywall or plaster was up, screwed in, nailed in, uh, all complete, except that all of the joins and all the nail holes weren't finished off. And it looked kind of ugly, plus the plaster had gone yellow and uh, weathered in some areas. So I hired this guy to come in, it cost me about 500 bucks to, the, to do the entire garage, including the ceiling, worth every single cent, I tell you now, um, worth the money. And he taped up all of the joins, filled in all the nail holes, and then over a couple of days, he put two, maybe three coats of plaster over the top, sanding each one down in between. He finally came back once it was dried out for a couple of days. He came back and put on a finishing top coat, which you can see here, which is a finer texture. And then he sanded it all down, ready for painting. Uh, it leaves behind a layer of dust on everything, and that has to come off before you paint, otherwise the paint will peel off. So fortunately, he left me the scaffolding, and I was able to get up there and do all of the ceiling, then all of the walls. And then I hired myself a spray paint gun. Uh, you can get those from a higher place. And I put on two coats of plaster sealer paint. Now, this they may just call it undercoat or whatever. that calls it different things in different areas. But it's designed for raw plaster because plaster sucks paint up like you wouldn't believe, like a sponge. So I put two full coats on. I had a little left over, so I put a third coat in some problem areas where I could see watermarks. When it was finished, it looked fantastic. No need for a final coat. I then wanted to clean the floor to get all the dust and plaster droppings off. And with a pressure washer, a broom, a scraper, and some elbow grease, I was able to get that all out. Now, I had no interest in painting the floor because a platform was going down on it and the preparation to paint concrete floors is just exhausting. Unnecessary. I did, however, paint the edge that is around the entire outside of the uh, garage floor. Then I was able to bring in the 7 foot by 5 foot horse stall mats by 3 quarter inch thick. They had run out of 6 by 4s but I got a really good deal on these so it ended up cheaper. They can just go straight down onto the clean floor, clean dry floor, at the back of the garage. But once you get to the door, you can see how the floor slopes away there. And that's to allow rainwater and snow melt coming off your car to run out of the garage. And also, exhaust fumes will also run down the floor and out of the garage. But to lift on it is dangerous, and I just wasn't interested in doing that. So I got some 2x4s or 50 by 100s and cut them corner to corner in a diagonal. So I ended up with these five meter long wedges and the, uh, the height of the, un the ends of the wedge was just perfect for the fall on my floor. I suggest though that you measure your fall to find out how thick you need your wedges to be at the thickest end and cut accordingly. I then put noggins in between. These long wedges are placed 50 centimeters center to center apart and then the noggins stop them from bending and moving under the platform. Uh, you want to put extra noggins in where you're going to be deadlifting. Um, more is better than not enough. I then put down a layer of plywood, six foot by four foot by three quarter inch plywood. That's the main uh, platform, that's the main workout area finished now. It was all in imperial measurements uh, and I work in metrics so there were a few gaps and I just fill those up with some strips that I cut. Uh, screw it down. Do not glue it. If you glue it, you're going to have one giant piece of timber that if you want to move it, you're going to have to cut it up to move it. So once it was all screwed down and finished, then I could put my lifting platform on. It started out with uh, two pieces of rubber. I actually put two layers of rubber down so that it had a full 1 inch or 25 mil thickness which is the recommendation by Aleco for their plates. I then put the top layer of the platform down. It's a 3 meter by 3 meter area to allow room for the squat rack and all of the exercises I do in that, plus a deadlift area without having to move everything. Um, once it was all screwed down, um, it was ready for use. I am going to put uh, grey carpeting on it eventually, 
but I also don't suggest that you put polish on it or wax or uh, varnish or anything like that. You need a slightly rough surface to work with. So that's my level garage floor. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching.